In problem 16, we are going to look at the basics of the Mohr circle. What I'm going to do, I'll go through this problem first, solve it, and then I can review the basics of the Mohr circle. And the idea of, of doing this problem, uh, actually it's going to help you to understand the basic definition of the Mohr circle. All right, as you see here in this figure, we have several planes, right? You see we have plane 1, uh, there is a plane 2, plane 3, right? plane 4, and plane 5. And the problem is asking us to plot the plane 2, uh, 3, 4, and 5. So before uh, going into any kind of uh, calculation, let me I explain you about the first. Before going into the details, let's say what we have in figure one. Indeed, figure one is a cubic cut of a rock that shows several planes crossing it, right? These planes are conceptual plane, and we are going to find out how much normal stress and shear stress is applied on each of these planes, right? So we know we have sigma one of 100 megapascal, Sigma 3, it's 20 megapascal. And for sure, uh, based on the orientation of each plane, we have different normal stress and shear stress applied on them, right? So we want to find out how much is the normal stress and shear stress for each plane. And then we plot in the graph at the bottom. And then we try to understand how these dots can be uh, related to each other and that would actually give you uh, a definition of the um, more circle all right let's start with the uh, with plane two uh, but before uh, getting into that we need to write down the equation that, that we have um, that relates the normal stress and shear stress to uh, principal stresses, right? So principal stresses, which are sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3, and the normal stress and shear stress are sigma n and sigma s, and we know sigma n is equal sigma 1 plus sigma 3 divided by 2 plus sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2 cosine 2 theta and sigma s is equal sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2 sine 2 theta. Alright, so we know sigma 1 is 100 megapascal, sigma 3 is 20, uh, uh, sigma n and sigma s are unknown and we are going to calculate them and the theta it's given in this figure, right, for, for plane 2 uh, let's say for plane 2, I'm going to write it here. For plane 2, we have sigma n is equal, uh, sigma 1 is 100 plus 20 divided by 2 plus 100 minus 20 divided by 2 and cosine 2 theta. So to theta, it's given here, right? The theta here, it's equal. 45 degrees, so 2 theta, it's going to be 90 degrees, right? So we know that the 90 degrees cosine 90, uh, it's going to be 0, right? So if uh, we have 0 here, then um, this one also will be 0, right? So the remaining portion is going to be uh, 120 divided by 2 sigma and it's 60 megapascal and always remember that put the uh, units it's very very important and the sigma s is equal to 100 minus 20 divided by 2 sine uh, 2 multiplied by 45 right and the sine 90 it's 1 then we have 100 minus 20 divided by 2 and that's equal to 80 divided by 2 and that's 40 mega pascal all right so if we're going to plot the plane 2 on the graph 
for sigma n we have 60 degrees right so let's put the dash line here and sigma s is 40 so we are going to be somewhere here right so this is plane 2 all right so we are going to uh, do this for plane 3 4 and 5 and then um, uh, we're gonna have a few more points and we're gonna discuss exactly what we can do with this point all right for plane 3 let's say for plane 3 okay uh, maybe we start with, with theta angle for plane 3 actually we have 90 degrees right and remember that the theta angle is the angle between the plane and the direction of the sigma 3 always and you should memorize it so um, let's say sigma n it's gonna be again uh, we already calculated we know 100 plus uh, 20 it's 120 divided by 2 it's going to be 60 I put 60 here plus and uh, here we have 100 minus 20 by and cosine 180 degrees right so from here we can calculate the cosine 180 it's negative 1 right so we have let's say this is negative 1 and 100 divided by 20 that's going to be 80 divided by 2 it's 40 to multiply by negative 1 that's going to be 60 negative 40 right 60 minus 40 and that's going to be 20 mega pascal for sigma s we have actually let's put it there right so far we have uh, 40 mega pascal sine 180 degrees and we know sine 180 degrees is zero right so we can write 40 multiplied by zero that's going to be zero mega pascal for sigma s for sigma n uh, we have 20 right and the sigma s is zero actually we are looking here and that's my plane right let me I calculate for plane uh, 4 I'm gonna do with another color plane 4 plane 4 is this one here and as you see this angle is 135 degrees right let's keep uh, consistent with the direction of the angle right so what I'm gonna do Sigma n is equal um, again we have done this many times so still i'm gonna write it down that's fine okay so here we have cosine of 270 degrees and for sigma s we have 100 minus 20 divided by 2 sine 270 degrees and we know cosine of uh, 270 is going to be 0 and here this portion is going to be completely gone and we have sigma n equal 60 mega pascal right and the other side we have 40 multiplied by negative 1 is equal to negative 40 mega pascal so one thing here, the negative sign actually shows the direction of the shearing, all right? So positive uh, sigma s and negative sigma s, it's going to show either is right lateral or left lateral shear, all right? So we we, we can uh, we can discuss about this later on, but we know that's going to be plotted on the other direction, right? Okay, let's say plane four, sixty and forty, right? So somewhere here we have plane 4. Uh, let's uh, look at to plane 5. I'm going to delete this portion.
for plane 5, its um, theta angle is equal to 180 degrees. So sigma n, it's going to be, um, this time I'm going to just put the right numbers, right? 100 plus 20, 120 divided by 2, it's 60, plus um, 40 multiplied by cosine 360 degrees. So cosine 0 or 360, it's 1. And we have 60 plus 40, that's going to be 100 megapascal. And for sigma s or shared stress, we have 40 megapascal multiplied by sine uh, 360. And we know sine 360 is 0. Then the uh, multiplication is going to be 0 megapascal. If I'm going to plot the plane 5, I'm going to end up to, okay, here, this is the typo. This is, you see, every... Uh, step is 20, so here actually is 100 rather than 110, uh, which is given in the book. All right, so let's say this is plane 5. And um, let me I uh, get rid of uh, this calculation for plane 5, and then we discuss some other points here. So, um, as you know, I'm going to highlight all the points that I obtained. This is one point, this is another point, this is another point, this is another point, and this one is the one more point, all right? So, um, we know the more circle, right, is it's going to be circle, right? Based on the name, we know we are expecting having a circle, and the circle uh, going to have the center, and I would like to find what is the center of the Mohr circle. So the center that I'm going to show you, uh, to show with C, indeed is equal sigma 1 plus sigma 3 divided by 2. All right, that's the circle. That's the center of the Mohr circle. And the radius of the Mohr circle is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2. All right, we're going to show this on the graph later on. But let's, let's find out what these numbers are. So we have 100, 120 divided by 2. That's going to be 60 megapascal. That's going to be center of the Mohr circle. And the radius, it's going to be 40 megapascal. So I'm going to show center of the circle. So here it's my center of the circle. And if I take my compass and uh, based on this, um, you know, center and the radius of 40 megapascal. If I draw a circle, you're going to see that all these points, it's going to be plotted on that circle. So what this means, as you see here in this figure, we, look, we looked at two five different planes. We got the five points of this circle, right? So you can assume if there is any extra planes between, you know, these two representative planes, right? Any of these planes that I'm drawing here, let's say we have, you know, 360 planes uh, with one degree distance between these planes. In that case, you're going to have 360 points that are sitting, you know, along this circle, right? So this is the, this is actually its definition of the Mohr circle. It shows the state of the stress, which means uh, uh, how much normal stress and shear stress is applied in different direction of the uh, of the faults. So the uh, the failure plane may occur here, may occur along this, right? May occur along this based on the type of the force is applied on the rock or anisotropic behavior of the rock. So. When we drawing the Mohr circle, actually we can we can read all the normal stress and shear stresses in different directions of the rock, right? So, uh, as I said, I don't want to get into more details, but uh, based on this practice, we just going to uh, illustrate that the Mohr circle is showing the state of the stress in different direction 
uh, inside the rock. Let me I go over the more circle definition one more time uh, with other uh, detail. All right, so let me I put um, this one here. We know that the x-axis is sigma n. Um, Y axis is sigma s, and uh, we have the Mohr circle, right? Let's say this is the center, right? And this is the R, right? And based on the definition, we know C it's gonna be okay, sigma 1 plus sigma 3 divided by 2, and R is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2. And uh, you already know that the intersection of the circle and the sigma n, there are two points and the maximum number is sigma 1 and the minimum number is sigma 3. Uh, we want to go further and say if this is my point, right? So here we have sigma s and here we have sigma n value, right? And this angle, this is 2 theta. So I just want to extract the uh, sigma 1 and sigma s functions. So as you see here, I can say sigma n, right? Um, I can say the sigma n is equal, okay, this much plus this much, right? So we know this is equal c and this one, okay, we need to calculate this, right? So what I'm going to do, I will highlight this triangle, okay, and draw it larger here. And let's say this is my 2 theta, and here is the radius, which is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2, right? So I need this one as an x to calculate sigma m, right? So sigma m indeed is c plus x, right? So what I'm going to do, I will calculate x and also I will do for y because we need y as well. And you can actually go with the basics of the trigonometry and you can say easily uh, because y is the opposite limb of this triangle. Indeed, you can say um, uh, uh, hypotenuse, okay, which is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2 multiplied by sine 2 theta. And the x, indeed, is the adjacent, right? And we can say hypotenuse multiplied by cosine 2 theta, right? So this part, the c, right, which I'm highlighting with this green here, right? This one, which is x, indeed, we can um, plug it into function. c, we know, is sigma 1 plus sigma 3 divided by 2. And the x is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2 multiplied by cosine 2 theta. Uh, and the sigma s indeed is this much here, right? Which is equal to this limb of the uh, triangle, right? Indeed, this is the answer. Or you can say actually sigma s is equal to y. And that one is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2 sine 2 theta all right so if you if you cannot memorize these two functions you can easily draw this figure and obtain the functions from there so all right i'm going to redo it again uh, for more uh, so here this is my sigma n for no much stress this is shear stress uh, this is my circle, more circle. Here we have sigma 3. Here we have sigma 1. Here we have C. Here we have R. Right? And the value of this point, here we have sigma n for A, right? And here we have sigma s for A, right? As we discussed, uh, here that's 2 theta and this triangle here it's quite important if you do the trigonometry on that you can easily you know find out the limbs of this uh, one side is R 
the other side is x and y you can find those you can obtain the sigma n and sigma s another thing that we we're gonna discuss later on just i'm just bring it up here we said we're gonna have a fader envelope something like that and then if the circle is below this failure envelope, we are actually in the stable zone. If the circle is large enough to cross over, then we are going to be on the unstable zone and the rock is going to break under that stress field. So we're going to get into that details later on, but right now I'm just reviewing the components. And another thing that you can actually highlight from this graph it's the intersection of the uh, failure envelope and shear stress i show this one with cs which stands for cohesive strength of the rock right so i think so far that would be enough um, uh, by doing this exercise we just wanted to highlight the definition of the Mohr circle which represents the state of stress uh, in different directions of the rock.